Alright, this is my automated car project for ECET 365. My name is William Grow, student number D01157511. And I guess the best place to start is by uh, construction notes. Uh, this is my car. Uh, my goal with this car was to try to keep the wiring as neat as possible. Uh, I tried to wire everything I could down the back of the car. It did take some creativity. I also tried to keep as many things as possible off the top of the proto board. I did not like those uh, sub boards sticking up or the connector sticking up. So I mounted them underneath there. And also, everything I could is mounted to the bottom of the uh, car itself. Uh, I got my switches for the right motor and left motor. They're currently selected on. I also have my battery pack mounted underneath again. I wanted to keep things clean. Um, I will say though that the uh, snake's nest or rat's nest was kind of the end of a long day and I uh, probably could have routed that a lot cleaner had I taken a break, but uh, you know, stuff happens. H bridge. I mounted the smaller capacitors underneath here. Uh, I only put the bigger ones up there because they did take up a lot of room and uh, it was a little difficult to put them underneath. Um, I figured with the uh, clean wiring it would be easier to troubleshoot in the event that something were to go wrong. Um, drop my rubber band here. Also, neater appearance just looks better. Um, you may notice I had a bag of rubber bands here next to me. My original goal of that one was to increase the radius of the outside tire by building rubber bands on top of the, uh, the original one that was supplied. What I found was that uh, with the internet, or internet, interrupt subroutines, that uh, it took a lot of time away having a depowered wheel um, to make the turns. So my goal was to build up the outside tire to use a subroutine less and uh, that way more power would be delivered to the inside tire more often. Um, let's see, also I had the idea of moving my drag track here uh, to the inside. What I was hoping for was a canoe-like effect where the inside oar would drag, helping the car make the turn. Um, I never did get a chance to test that theory. Uh, we'll get to that here in a minute. Um, you may also notice that a cord is hooked up to my computer. And here's our program. It is the Robotic Car Interrupt Subroutine, or Service Routine. Um, I found this program to be the faster of the two, if I'm thinking back to my labs correctly. Um, the car seemed to turn quicker, which is important because we were doing an oval track. Um, that being said, the um, about week six I ran into a bit of a problem. I think my car suffered a bit of ESD damage. You can see here that the uh, everything is on, the lights are lit up, and uh, everything is honky-dory. Um, but I took the liberty of preloading the program into Code Warrior here. Let's see. And it gave me this warning. Communication with the target has failed. Uh, no clock or wrong BDM clock speed, and that's all fine and dandy. We'll go ahead and let it go through. It's going to tell me about the knob ram. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. There you go. And I can guarantee the chip is not secured. Uh, operation has failed or been cancelled. So, um, I did a bit of troubleshooting on this. At first I thought there was a broken wire or something in my USB cable um, that would allow it to power the board but uh, not load. So to test that I actually have my board from last semester. This one actually I know is bad. I'm sure you're wondering why I didn't uh, use this board instead. If um, 
if I thought I had a bad microprocessor? Well, the answer is uh, this actually has a bad microprocessor from supply. Um, I contacted uh, Axiom's uh, tech support. They directed me to a forum. And what I found out is um, this is bad and it won't power the LCD screen uh, or the buttons up top. It only works on this board. I'm not sure any of the details beyond that. Um, but what I can do is show you that the USB cable is good. That's what we were out to prove. By running a program, let's see here, let's stop this current one. This is a simple test program I wrote. You can read it there. It's just a simple, simple counter program. And what I intend to do is use the LEDs on the processor board to count. So, no clock errors on this one. Just the NovRam warning. Loading. And we'll press play. Alright, so this should be running. Uh, let's see, oh, wrong side. There she goes. How about that, huh? And like I said, everything on the bottom board works okay. I'm not too worried about ESD at the moment. This is already bad. I tend to recycle the electronic parts. Um, but nothing up here works. Um, this program doesn't run anything up here, but... Uh, there you go. So, again, to prove, I'm just going to disconnect this while that program is running. I'm going to plug it straight into this one. Alright, so there's nothing there. But it's powered up. Um, let's stop our program. Stop. Sorry. Stop. Hey. Hard reset, right? Okay, we're gonna go to debug again. Same program that I just ran before on the same microprocessor chip, and communications with target has failed. Has no clock or wrong BDM clock speed. Um, our grid is secured. I've uh, already checked the switches on this. I've already checked the jumper positions on this, and compared them with the known good. And everything is lined up. This is what I've spent about the last week doing. It's been very, very frustrating. Um, everything is a known good. I've tried, uh, you know, anything I could think of. Uh, with the battery pack, you can see I currently have installed four Duracell batteries. Uh, maybe you can't see that. You can see the copper top there, right? Um, I thought the problem might lie in my battery pack, so I removed the rechargeable batteries that I found worked the best and installed the four Duracells. I tried recharging my uh, rechargeable batteries and I even went back to the three Duracells with a jumper. None of that changed anything. Um, I've checked my wiring schematic. Uh, let's see if I still have that up here. There we go. Check my wiring schematic here. Uh, everything pins out perfectly. Um, I'm honestly stuck on, well, I'm not really stuck duck it's a bad microprocessor if uh, they could have gotten one out here in time I probably could have done it um, but being in a remote location there's European plug for you um, it's not really an option uh, mail here is kinda slow so there it is and you could say it's at the starting line at the Le Mans and the darn thing won't start